Whiskey lovers, welcome back to Whiskey Advocate's Dram Debate, where the Whiskey Advocate editors agree to disagree on all things whiskey. All right, guys, so when we're tasting at the office, we use Glen Cairn glasses. We normally taste the whiskey straight out of the bottle. How do you drink it when you're tasting at home or just enjoying whiskey? I like to drink my whiskey neat, same way we taste in the office, pretty much all the time. This is a 50% alcohol bottled in Bond, so that's, uh, that's perfect for drinking neat, but even a cask strength whiskey, I'll usually take a neat without water and just sip it over a long period of time. You don't, you don't find that it numbs your palate when you're having barrel strength whiskey? I mean, because you know the nature of whiskey is it always has water added, or if it's not cast strength, it has water added to reach this 100 proof or to reach 86 proof. So there's certainly nothing wrong with that. No, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. I just tend to, to like it at whatever proof it's bottled at. It's usually bottled that way for a reason. And you get some flavors when you add water in. But See, what I like about cast myself, strength is, you know, I'm a, I'm a frugal guy. I feel like I'm absolutely getting more whiskey for my money. And then by adding the water, I've expanded my, <laughs> my amount of whiskey. Susanna, how do you like to drink your whiskey? Uh, I like to taste it neat first because, um, as you pointed out, you know, I think there's a reason it was put in the bottle at a particular proof. But um, after I do that initial taste, I usually like to add a little water with an eyedropper to control how much I'm adding. At home, you use an eyedropper? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have a few eyedroppers and they're always at the ready because it allows me to add just a little water to the whiskey, assess it, taste it again, and see if I need more water. And if I do, you know, I, 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 tasting after a few drops lets me know how it's reacting to the water and, and what other flavors might be lurking if I add more or if I leave it there and like it the way it is. Makes sense. So you keep going back with the eyedropper until yeah. you like hit the sweet spot. Exactly. I would, I would rarely free pour, maybe never. And a lot of master blenders do heavily dilute their whiskey when they're tasting because once you get it, you know, 50% more water in there, you're really releasing the flavors and all the flaws will show and you get a lot more out of it. Yeah. Well, what, how do you like to take your whiskey at home? I drink whiskey year-round. Yes, I usually sip it neat as the blender intended out of the bottle, but I love it with ice and I have no problem dropping a nice big cube in here because I like to chill. I'll drink a whiskey sitting by my pool in the summer and I like the way it evolves, you know? It's like, it starts out, the first sip is out of the bottle and then by the time you get to the, to the end, you're gradually getting more water and it just keeps changing and changing. Don't you find though that the ice chills it and makes it a little harder to, to get some of the flavors that um, you know might tighten up when it's cold? Well, this isn't, it doesn't really chill that much. I, I guess if it gets that cold, then you're not drinking it fast enough. <laughs> Touche. I think as long as it's good whiskey, you really can't go wrong and drink it as you like. That's, that's a good point. And I yeah. think it's also important to consider the way a lot of people drink their whiskey varies. And uh, the, obviously, between the three of us, it varies, so. It's true, I mean, I, I have no statistical evidence, but I would say probably 90% of the whiskey in America is consumed with ice in it. I would like to see if, if that is true, if you ever get hold of some data. The key is that my way of drinking is right, and yours are both wrong. <laughs> Whatever. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers.